From the flight deck of the Astral Plane, this is your captain, Star Pilot 33, checking in with something completely different. You know, I received so many messages and comments asking if I plan to do a follow up video to my flight log number four, which told the story of the upgrade that I received from the entities on that last mushroom trip. Everyone was interested to know how I was feeling now a month later, and whether I noticed any long-term positive effects. I received one email in particular that was fascinating, and it was the inspiration to make this podcast video. The email was sent by a new member of the psychedelic community called Lucidity73, and I was amazed to learn that he had a very similar upgrade experience on seven grams of dried mushrooms only seven days before my upgrade trip. Even more interesting is the fact that Lucidity73 is a professional psychotherapist with years of experience in his field, and he offers a very unique and intriguing perspective with his educational and professional background in psychology, psychotherapy, and now the role of psychedelics as they relate to both. I knew I really needed to talk to him, so we set up a Skype call and talked unscripted for nearly two and a half hours, which I think is the longest I've ever talked on the phone with somebody I just met. Lucidity73 is considering starting his own YouTube channel in the future, and I hope he will be among the number of growing voices out there talking about psychedelics as well as the spiritual experience. His background brings new insight that we really need in the psychedelic community, especially with the current research into the therapeutic benefits of psilocybin. I think you will really enjoy this conversation we had and will relate to many of the topics covered. So with that, for the next hour or so, please welcome Lucidity73 on the frequency and sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Okay, so we've got Lucidity73. Correct. Tell us a little bit about your background and, you know, your professional uh, history and, and what brought you to the point of eating seven grams of dried mushrooms about a week before my upgrade trip. <laughs> so, so in any case, my background. So, um, you know, I'm, uh, I, I'm a gay guy. Uh, I am from the Pacific Northwest. Um, I became a psychotherapist. Um, I've been doing psychotherapy now um, since, since about 2007. Um, I really love doing it. And, you know, I, I also, um, you know, work at a nonprofit at a, in a relatively high level position. Um, so I do a lot of community work and also, uh, psychotherapy. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah. And so, so that's, that's kind of a little bit of an overview. I mean, in terms of how I grew up, you know, my, I had a single parent mom, uh, kind of living in poverty, but it all, it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't have to go through any, um, major trauma aside from, you know, being gay and kind of dealing with that back in the um, 80s and 90s. So, uh, but then um, at, when I was about 20 years old, um, I got involved in, um, in depth psychology with uh, specifically looking at how to help an LGBT person uh, come to self-acceptance inside themselves. And uh, a key uh, function of that um, process for me was uh, learning about the shadow. And this actually connects with what we're going to talk about today in terms of the entities and stuff like that, at least for me. So by the shadow, I mean dealing with the dark side of the self, the places we don't want to go or feel. Uh, yet at some level, at least for some of us, myself included, you can still feel the pain even if you're trying to be in denial of it. So in any case, I did a lot of shadow work for like 20 years, which is heavily focused on going inside, reflecting on, and almost seeking out where is my pain? How am I hurting? Okay, and so... Over a process of, of it's, it's been 23 years now, um, I've kind of come to, for me, at least a, a new phase in terms of working with shadow material. And that's, long, I won't get too much into that right now, but essentially that involves how to be connected to shadow material and open to the profundity, in my opinion, that's available to us, energically speaking. Um, so... So in any case, so, so that's kind of like a, 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 a brief kind of summary of my background. And then I think the next question you asked was, why seven grams of mushrooms? Was that the question? Or how did you come to that night when you just were like, I'm, I'm going to just eat all these mushrooms and, and <laughs> it happens. It's like, how, how did we get there? Okay. Okay. So I, in preparing for our conversation tonight, I did, I was looking at my notes and there had been kind of a, a buildup for me. So this was kind of, kind of a culmination. So when COVID-19 hit, was actually, was coincidentally the same night I started a series of mushroom journeys uh, that were happening every other week for a period of time. I've since stopped 
for, for a lot of different reasons, not permanently, but um, but there was just, it was a series during the, the COVID crisis. So this one was the same night that it was kind of announced on Sunday night. I remember a flurry of calls coming in when the shutdown happened locally where I live. So so there had been kind of a buildup for me. And, and long story short, I had started to feel kind of a sense of entities, if you want to call them that, or messages, or like, um, I don't know, a... Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know if I want to say wisdom or cosmic intelligence. I mean, a lot of these are cliche words, but it's like, it's like something's just appearing. Maybe the, there's a term for it, um, claircognizance, where it's like a feeling of knowing something. It's kind of like that, but also receiving. So it's not just that I, part of it feels like innate knowing, but part of it also feels like it's really receiving something. So things have been kind of building up. I have been kind of working with this idea of the entities. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube, I'm, I'm sure, for, for folks who are watching things like this. More and more, um, people are talking about various forms of contact in different ways. So, so there have been kind of a buildup. So in terms of getting to the seven gram level, which I will add, you know, for me, what was really important uh, in terms of that process was that I fasted. I learned about fasting um, uh, before taking mushrooms and also grinding them uh, and, and adding uh, lemon juice. Yes. Uh, and so I had done that and along with uh, uh, basically about a 20 hour fast. So it was like 4 PM the day before was the last time I ate and I took them at like 2 PM the next mm -hmm. day. So that, so basically you know, if you can imagine your your sustenance is all is the mushrooms only right. and some lemon juice, right? So it there's a way it's almost like a a transformation occurs. This whole experience happens, um, which I'll get into in a minute. But I want to make sure I'm answering your question why. So, but I, the reason why was because uh, I there was like a feeling of being called mm -hmm. towards something that was both that was both inside yet outside of my present consciousness. Um, so, and because I've done so much death work, I mean, let me be real for me doing mushrooms is also terrifying almost every time. Um, and I have so much respect for mushrooms in that way. Like this is not, there is no free ride here, <laughs> by the way, for, you know, if this, if this does become a podcast and people are listening, right. I'm sure people know this, but I think you need to respect fear because it is, it can be, you know, as you may have experienced yourself, um, uh, uh, terrifying at points. But I think for me, because I had done a lot of the shadow work, I was able to kind of hang in there with it and not be scared off. And, and what, how many times had you done mushrooms before this trip? The seven gram one? Yeah. How many times? Per so there have been maybe like four or five times, all clustered within just a few months prior. Okay. So this was a culmination. This was like the, the big kahuna. Yeah. Trip. So yeah, so that's, so, so that's why I did them. And, uh, and then, so your next question, you had, you had one right after that too, right? Which was what happened? What exactly happened? <laughs> I know you wrote an email, but, but let's, let's hear the story. A lot of it, you know, initially it was interesting. I, it, I was, um, very restless, um, which oftentimes happens for me, um, during, during, uh, mushroom experiences where I'm like, I, you know, I'm on my bed, you know, I, initially I might be talking with a friend and then I go into my bedroom and just lie on my bed. And ultimately I go to complete silence. I even with music, I just need total silence. And uh, that seems to work for me. Ultimately, the most profound moment for me was what I called the actual arrival itself. So I was lying in my bed facing the ceiling and I, I started to feel this like, purpley energy sweeping in. So I'm on the second floor coming in like a, in almost like a U shape coming in right into my body and then going out back out. But it was coming in and I could feel that purpliness. And I had, you know, I, as I'm telling you this, I'm remembering I had been interacting with them. Um, I think before and after this experience, it's hard to remember exactly the order, but, but we, there was like this, Actually, I think it was them coming into me through this light, and then I interacted with them. I, I believe that's that was the order. So it's like this energy, and it's like I imagine feeling something like going into your back, your back body, like in inside your bone marrow, or even deeper than that. Mm -hmm. I, it was it was like my whole I like I couldn't not shine inside in a certain kind of way anymore, um, which. 
like so many things were becoming conscious as I was going through the experience. Um, but, but in any case, just to stick with this image. Um, so, so this energy is coming in. Okay. And, and, uh, and I can feel it like, like I'm merging with it. My, my, it's a cliche now to see my DNA is merging with it, but it's like it became, we merged. I I had recently on that note been reading uh, or or listening to an audio book from Whitley Strieber who had written the book uh, communion. And so I actually really resonated with that word in terms, if you look it up in terms of how it works with entities, it's like a true merger of, of, of spirit uh, energy or, or whatever are my energy with their energy. And, um, and as that was going on, I just was so, not only so thankful, I mean, that, that came a little bit later. I mean, first of all, I was stunned. I, you know, I have been a sciencey person pretty much my whole life. I, you know, I rejected new age stuff that just because, you know, I, I'm interested in what's real. Right. And so, so I was tripped the fuck out now, pardon my French, but I, you know, and it had been building towards this, as I said, you know, that the entities were showing, imagine, imagine they're like, you know, these little messages. So you're getting teased, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't, you know, I was open to it, but this was a whole other level. It was like, not only did they visit me, but they're in me and they're, and frankly, they're, I, I feel them in, they're in me now. You know I mean? That's the thing. That's what that means. That's what that meant for me. And so as that was happening, I knew I was like, oh, I am changed forever. And I felt like a complete pivot in my life in a way that I didn't quite understand. And, and since it's been developing for me a lot, you know, a lot has happened since that experience. But um, but yeah, that's that's maybe kind of a, a nutshell of, uh, of uh, 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 or a little headline about what that was like. And you were saying that the word upgrade even came to mind, and that was even before you saw my video and yes. four three four. Yes. That's the the term that you could best describe yeah. it. Yeah. So um, so one of the the cool things, and I think for me it's been so important, and I think anyone doing you know a plant medicine journey, you know, if you can have someone to talk to mm-hmm. uh, about about what you're experiencing and be real about it, and especially if you can talk about the more mystical, magical things. I think, and so I've been really lucky to, to have someone who, who is very supportive and has his own experiences um, around that. So, so basically, uh, yeah, in our conversations, I started joking. I was like, I'm upgraded. You know, there's an upgrade. There, there has been an upgrade, uh, is yeah. what I said to him. And, and so how do you feel? You know, it's been a, a little over a month, a couple days over a month. Like, how, how are yeah. you feeling that's different? And tell me about the dreams, because I've got, I've got some of that, too, going on. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So essentially, um, you know, one of, I, I, what I felt like, you know, a combination of the mushrooms or entities or however you want to put it. And this upgrade, of course, um, has been essential to all that has basically opened up to possibilities in my life that I had never thought I could have on an emotional level. What it feels like is, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about, growing up gay and basically having self-esteem issues and, you know, and it's different every year it's getting mostly, I suppose, better for LGBT people. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, so this, I was born in 76. So, you know, I, it was, it was hard. It was, it was difficult. And I think there was a lot of, uh, internalization of just kind of self doubt, uh, constant questioning, um, issues of worth, you know, when a child doesn't feel worthy or young adult or, you know, or teenager, let's put it that way is not feeling worthy that I think that can, that has long time, uh, uh neurological consequences. Absolutely. Um, and, Right on. And so maybe, maybe in some ways it's like that for all trauma, you know, in different forms, we experience different kinds of trauma, you know, Absolutely. like all the racial trauma that, that has been, you know, rightfully so in, in the public eye so much recently. Um, so yeah, so that was my, my trauma. And so I think it kind of left me, even though I had done tons of, you know, analysis and self work, it's like, I couldn't quite get at something inside where I just, I just wasn't enough. Some, I not even not enough. There, I was. I always felt like there's something kind of wrong with me at some level that I couldn't even put my finger on or necessarily consciously justify. Mm-hmm. And in and in that sense, that 
issue, it's not like it's been removed, like I've been lobotomized, but it's sort of like now there's two presences. There's that pain body, but now there's that love body or that other, like another presence that feels more potent than the pain of my rejection as a child, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, 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 and that's what's so amazing about this medicine. And that's what it is. I mean, this is, like you said, the respect that you have of the mushrooms. This is, this is not a recreational thing that you go, I mean, you can go and do it at a festival or whatever, but you're missing out on what it can do for you in a, in a, you know, ceremonial or just personal setting. And it's been like, you know, you've heard him say that, um, you know, eight hours of mushrooms is like, is like five years of therapy. And it, yes. it's, it really is true. And I, I agree. Never I found agree. Anything self help, self help or otherwise that has been able to help me realize things about my past, about myself and resolve them and move on faster than just doing mushrooms a couple times. But I think there's, there's much more of a therapeutic value to it in leading you mm-hmm. through those parts of your psyche that you need to address and like you said the the bad and the ugly and like you said it it can be terrifying but yeah looking at your true self with with all of the you know the the frosting and the the trappings and the things we like to deceive ourselves just stripped off and this is who you are and it, it can be terrifying and that's why you have to go in with the mindset and 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 be prepared I, I couldn't agree more. I loved how you, you framed all that. Um, and, and the, the, the only the, a piece I would, I would just tack onto that for me and that, and that I'm, I'm curious to hear, I, I'm imagining you had your own version of this, but all, you know, feeling all that shadow material, all that pain facing, dealing with your worst fears, for instance, mm-hmm. like having those surface in the context ultimately of love, right? Love. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I hear a lot of people say, how do you know those entities were good? How do you know that you didn't just get possessed by some evil spirit? It's like, you can't fake the love. You can't, I don't care what it is in this universe, but you can't, oh. you can't project love in a deceitful way. I mean, we know how to recognize that. You know, it's it's like an animal recognizes danger or, you know, we recognize uh, things. It's just you you cannot deny that feeling of love from another creature or another entity. And my experiences have been profoundly loving, even when I'm being shown something dark. And it's like it's like somebody's there holding my hand through it. And like, I know this is hard. And then when it's over and you get through that part of it, the, the love comes back again and you get that surge of light and support and you realize it's a lesson. It's not a punishment yes. to those things. Totally. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and maybe just to amplify a point you were making earlier, too, as far as, you know, mushroom experiences, like kind of being accelerated therapy as a therapist, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think that I think that therapy is really important and it has important use. So in my mind, it's not an either or thing, but you can certainly accelerate your development if you're if you have the capacity to do that. I guess, you know, I think I think it's I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, but I have so much respect for people who don't want to do them. You know, I have people I'm close to and I I couldn't respect that more, more because, you know, partly it makes me think of. You know, so many times I've done mushrooms where I'm like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done this, you know, <laughs> you know over the, these past several months. Um, almost every time it's like, yeah. Yeah, I remember even thinking, oh, God, I shouldn't have taken seven grams. Oh, I, I've had every the, time. I've had the mushrooms tell me that's like, look what you've done now. There's, <laughs> only, <laughs> there's only one way out. You've done it this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, another just kind of ripping off something else, you know, you were saying about love. I wonder if that's something that has been helpful for the two of us and for other people who are able to have contact. That's maybe important for other people to hear that to to be able to open up that love gate to allow to allow love, you know, because hearing you talk about it, Star Pilot 33 is to me is is communicating how you've taken that in. 
And in my hunches, especially based on other people who've used mushrooms in different kinds of ways, I'm not sure that a lot of people have are able to have that frame. Right. And and I've I've noticed there's a wide spectrum of people that go into this as far as the mindset goes. Um, a lot of people don't know what they want out of it. They they're not sure what they're looking for, and this is purely exploratory. Other people go in knowing that they need help from something otherworldly, that they've exhausted Earth's resources in the physical plane, and they're open to just whatever. It's just, I need help. I'm here. Wherever you're going tonight is fine. (laughs) Just show me what I need to see. I always say, when I take the mushrooms, I always say, please remind me who I am. Mm. Like, who I am. And because I think I've forgotten in the last few months or however, like, the oh, I love that. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful intention. It's like, yeah, it's like it's it feels like the tide of the world is starting to rise over me. And I'm forgetting who I really am outside of this Earth avatar. You know, that you, you go to work you do, when you do the mushrooms. It's like it it revives that sense of who you are. And, and everybody talks about ego, but it's like, no, it's it's not it's not your sense of of physical self it's it's your sense of who you are as an entity as a creation as a being as an energy form 100 percent. i couldn't agree more you know as you were talking i i I was you know one of the things i've been curious about because i've been hearing from other folks who've had sometimes not using psychedelics but of course there are a lot of channelers out there now who are talking about connecting to the entities and you know as you were talking i it just i just had the feeling of a certain kind of wisdom in you that i'm resonating with that maybe is in all of us actually that has to do with we're not who we think we are yes and that there's we forgot something and that the and part of the teaching from the mushrooms from the entities is actually helping us recollect right who we actually are and in our connection to a source if you want to put it that way that's that's exactly what I think, and I think some of it is just part of the human experience that we are here to forget and then remember, and I think some of it's our fault. Just the way we have crafted life as a human being it makes yeah. it harder to remember, but yeah. I've been on several trips where I've run into other travelers or other entities, and they are always like, oh, you know, you're back. Why did you, why haven't you been here in a while? You know, like they're welcoming you back as if you belong there in the first yeah. place, you know, as if th- that was yeah. some place that you left and now are returning to. Yes. And, and yes. Yeah. Yes. That feeling of familiarity. I always say when I, when I, when I need to do mushrooms, it's like, I need to go visit my friends and go home is what I say. <laughs> oh, right on. Oh, you get it. So you're already there. I guess in my mind, what I'm imagining is how do I live in that world more? even mm-hmm. when I'm not using mushrooms in terms of this deeper level. I, I do think it's kind of like you're saying, though, maybe part of there's a mixture of kind of self-illusions that we do as human beings, but then also it's innate to being in this 3D world where we just kind of come in like sort of in shock and, you know, having this human experience. But it also feels like part of our growth involves finally connecting with this cosmic intelligence. And you know, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say things that so many other people have said, but, you know, when we look at the age of the universe, you know, it's like almost 14 billion years and Earth has been here 4 billion years. We think that uh, planets were around that could be habitable only 1 billion years. Right. That's what science says after the universe formed. I mean, so we've got, you know, 12 billion years <laughs> of evolution. I mean, it just, it just makes sense. Yeah. To me that uh, this is, you know, and even more and more scientists are saying this and, you know, it makes me wonder what's going to go on in the science realm. And that's actually one thing I've always, uh, I think one of the reasons I was drawn to Star Pilot 33 is because you felt like a scientifically oriented person. And, you know, we don't have to go too far in this direction, but I just wanted to say something about it that, you know, I, I became very fascinated by hearing about this technology that they were sharing with you. And my guess is that they have shared this with other people, but you seem to kind of get a lot of detail. <laughs> like they were well, showing you a lot, but yeah. Um, I actually, uh, if it's okay, I had uh, another thing to share with you sure. along the lines we've been talking. Okay. So um, this other thing that 
happened recently, I think, as an after effect of the upgrade, for sure. I mean, to me, this feels like an emanation of it. This was actually about three nights ago, um, maybe maybe four or five nights, something like that. But I I was uh, I kept waking up. You know, you were talking about dreams. This was like not quite a dream, but slight, but kind of dreamish. And this is real simple, but it was really deep. Where I kept waking up into like a crystal, like I was becoming a crystal, mm. and it was like I kept waking up like four or five times. You know, it's one thing if you have, you know, like one dream that's weird and you're like, oh, that was weird. Let, you know, hopefully you jot it down. You probably won't if you're like me. But <laughs> but this kept happening over and over. And it was like I was becoming a crystal and all that that meant, including like some sort of connection with the cosmos vis-a-vis the crystalline structure. It's hard to describe, but it but it also is very personal and, and you know, too, it wasn't, it's, it, it's hard to put words to it, but I kept, it was like crystal consciousness. So, or I, I somehow I'm becoming, I'm like, my being is becoming crystalline somehow. So maybe in any case, you with your absorbing, ref, refle- reflecting and refracting the, the, you know, what you've learned on these trips. And it's sort of, maybe all this is passing mm-hmm. through you like a medium, like, like light passes through a crystal and bends and changes and becomes something on the other side. That's kind of how I think about like integrating a trip into my real life. It's sort of like this input comes in, it goes through me and then it comes out as something different and I'm the thing it passes through. And that's beautiful. Thank you. I thank you for that. Since, since my experience, I've, I have yet to feel the anxiety come back. Um, you know, we're back to work and everything. Right. You're work week, but I, I've not felt that crushing um, anxiety yet. And and it, it puts you in like an alert mode all the time. You're always in fight or flight mode, and you can't turn it off. I was finding myself still stuck in the fight or flight mode, just like answering emails. It's like there's nothing, there's nothing yes. here that's threatening me. Yet I'm still feeling this feeling, and I can't turn it off. And well, what are our options in today's world? You know, you, those, you've got meditation, you've got the, the holistic ways of looking at it, you've got, you know, so the therapy, they've got, you know, medication they give you. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Going on a mushroom trip just, just totally unplugs that whole socket mm-hmm. for several months for me. Just mm-hmm. it cuts the anxiety cord completely without any other effort. And I mean, yeah, with well, the mushroom trip does involve meditation and all these things that do help as well. And you have to get through. There's an anxiety phase of the mushroom trip, as you know, like on the cuts, yeah. you feel that brain, right. you know, gut connection where that's taking effect, and it's that anxiety. And I'm so familiar with that. I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this. But I know that as soon as I get past that part, it's all going to be worth it. And I'm going to get that awesome feeling of freedom from that. And I think that we have the, yeah. we have the plant medicine available yeah. that is given to us to fix it, you know, yeah. It, and yeah. it fixes it in a way that's not just taking a pill. It's fixing it a way that actually corrects the root of the problem, not just the, treating the symptoms of it. And I hope, I hope that with the therapy that's being looked into with psilocybin, I hope that you're going to be on the front lines of this and maybe be one of these practitioners that's going to help people integrate, you know, psilocybin therapy or, or yeah. guide, uh, you know, therapeutic. That would be so yeah. awesome. Totally. Be- yeah. Because how are they going to train love to. people? How are they going to train people to do this kind of thing? We need people like you. We need people with a strong therapy background the training yeah. that also have the psychedelic experience as well to be able to help other people. Well, I love that you're saying that. I, I, I totally resonate. And maybe to, to kind of respond to, to two things that you were saying, I'll get back to kind of the, maybe the role of psychotherapists who are aware of uh, psilocybin and its benefits. But, but um, you were talking about anxiety and how, you, how the, the mushrooms have helped you with that. One of, I've also, of course, been integrating um, what I feel like are the teachings for me into my work with with my clients. And you know, as you were as you were sharing, um, you know, I it was reminding me of how I've had kind of a whole revolution um, in terms of how I look at um, psychic uh, disturbances that I'm still 
uh, understanding. So that would include anxiety and depression, those kinds of things, rage, you know, whatever. Um, and that, that especially when we're talking about repetitious traumatizing patterns, um, I, the, the mushrooms have helped me almost learn to like, like I'm restructuring my brain. I know that might sound out there, but it's kind of like, you got to imagine that you're, you're the, what the mushrooms are doing. So we know, for instance, that there's neurogenesis involved when you take psilocybin. It just happens. You, it's neuro, it, it provokes neurogenesis. High doses do it too, but it's, but microdosing does it too. And that's a whole other conversation. But so neurogenesis is happening. Okay. In my experience, when you're on it and when you're not on it, and also in other forms, like when you're running or exercising, for instance, um, and these are things I feel like I've actually been learning to tap into. Like I have some of my best insights, almost all my best insights if I'm not taking mushrooms when I'm running uh, during the course of a run. But in any case, my whole point is just that I've been, what I feel like the teachings have been for me around dealing with anxiety and depression and stuff like that is that, um, and let, maybe I'll back up for a minute. I think what happens a lot of times in therapy circles or in, you know, in the, in the psychological world generally there can be a kind of obsession with the, the negative thing, you know, with whatever's traumatizing, with whatever that negative issue is. And in my opinion, not enough on, and it, I'm not even, it's not about blame or anything. It's just what I've been, feel like I've been learning on actually restructuring. So what I mean by that is like, I'm work, I feel like I'm working with my clients in a different way. It's we're like, okay, I, that's really important. I want to help you feel this fully. Mm -hmm. I want to help you feel this fully. And now we're going to help you let it go. We're going to help you let this go. You don't, you don't need this. This is not, it's okay. I, like how I was, I was talking to, to someone earlier today about it was to see it as a ride at the carnival. Okay. A roller coaster. She likes to think of it as like roller coasters with lots of loops. Okay. That was the drama trauma that she re-experiences. And I was saying, okay, so how about this? How about it's still there? It's still there, but it's one ride and it's one ride that you can go on if you want but you can also start to go to other rides. Right. And now I want you to feel this. I want you to feel this. Feel your capacity to step away from, you know, whatever, the obsession with the ride or the compulsion or the unconscious reenactment. That's okay. But let's, but let's keep widening the perspective. And so as I'm saying this to her, I'm imagining the neurological level changing and shifting. And so, and just working with that and really letting go. I think what psychologists and psychotherapists do a lot is they, they, they use trauma as a way they make it all magical or, or, you know, this important mystery. And I, and I, and I, it's not just, I think that trauma helps us grow. Like you were saying earlier, we need it. It's a, it's a huge part of what we're experiencing, but it's not the nugget. It's not the gold. Right. It's not what we're capable of. It's what we're coming out of. So, so yeah, I, I really love how you are describing, and it sounds like it's probably related also to this upgrade experience you've had, you've had that it's all, it's being handled emotionally and whatever yeah. the issues are being handled and you're accepting. It. I, I have to tell you, people, it seems to me are afraid to not feel bad. Whatever mm -hmm. historically they've been feeling all the time, mm -hmm. they're afraid as fuck. Yes. Because then they don't know who they are anymore. That's right. That's right. And and we're we're a culture that is told to hide your negative feelings, only express your positive ones, put a smile on your face all the time, be cheery, be happy, be polite, and not allow yourself to feel as deeply like you were saying. And and sometimes I know I'm guilty of this. Um, and I'll I'll get into a mushroom trip and. I don't know if this has ever happened to you or if you've been meditating and then all of a sudden you're just bawling, crying, just like tears are just jumping oh. out of your eyes. Like it's this huge yeah. like catharsis release of, of whatever I was holding in about whatever issues and it just comes out like a flood and it's just like I was holding all that in. Oh my gosh, I didn't feel like I was, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, actually right, right when you were, uh, you know, at, as you were sharing that, I was resonating with, uh, with an experience that happened right after, uh, uh, just l literally l the week following my upgrade, I, I went, I ended up going to Sedona and I, I, uh, I, I saw an ad for, um, uh, like a healer psychic type. I wasn't even planning to do it, but I was just enthralled with the image, which was like an owl and these weird symbols that yeah. resonated with me. And, and so long story short, in terms of this issue you were bringing up with the flood of emotions, 
during the course of my session with him, um, we were talking, and I had had I had had this experience maybe you know several years ago, so it had really nothing to do with mushrooms, um, but it hadn't really been processed. And in, and basically in this in this sort of like it was like a dream that felt real, right? So there are dreams that can feel kind of like dreams, and there are dreams that feels like oh this feels very real. Yeah. Um, it was one of those dreams, and basically in it. I was uh, in a cave with like like four other people, and uh, and this must have been had to have been a long time ago, like you know, in some prior existence. And I I wasn't thinking of it that way at the time. It felt like oh, this is happening. Um, but we died. We died in that cave. Mm-hmm. We died in that cave. And my in my work with him, I just like beyond bald like. Yeah. <laughs> the horror because yeah. you know what was so horrifying was the yeah. meaning what was what how it felt meaningless mm-hmm. or how it's like how could this happen how could we die in this cave um so in any case so yeah i i completely lost my shit he had to he, he instantly you know he was like great but he got up and had to like <laughs> yeah. pull the blinds down, <laughs> the blind down and it was, so yeah i i feel like um that emotional catharsis experience that you're referencing is central to a full mushroom experience um, and, and utterly necessary. I mean, I, I learned to look at it, it sounds like you do too, as an honoring now. If I can cry yeah. and open up or let that come, that's great because it means my ego defenses aren't so strong. Yeah, and it, it usually happens to me in the beginning of a trip, like right after the first wave where I meditate and get just pulled down the rabbit hole for the first time and I wake up maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes later. But it's that's usually when it is, and it's almost like a cleansing. Like they always, the entities always come and do a tune-up on me. Sometimes I see like Native American spirits, or like the medicine man spirits, or I see all kinds of different things that come and fix me first before we do the rest of the trip. And then the just like cleansing crying will be in the beginning. And then when it's over, the vibe changes, and we go on to do other things and fly spaceships. But in the beginning, there's this definite um, like tune-up that happens Beautiful. it's almost like they defrag the hard drive and they do whatever and they get you all tuned up and then they send you off to go do your lessons um, exactly that's been the you know I, has that been like that for you too do you notice that in the beginning of a trip where it feels like they're almost setting you up for what's happening that night oh yeah i mean my my version is you know kind of i was talking a little bit about the restlessness like i'm agitated um, I, I do get, I go through periods of fear of terror typically. Um, and then, um, uh, the catharsis, but yeah, I, I, there, there, I would say there's not always that kind of catharsis, but, but oftentimes mm-hmm. there is, I mean, I think part of it's, I've done so much friggin' self work. It's like, Oh my yeah. God, you know, I'm 43. I've been going, doing it since I was 20. So I kind of like know all the skeletons and, you know, I know them. And so I, <laughs> I just, yeah, I, in some ways, I feel like I was in a good emotional place yeah. already, or good enough, I should say, because I think you know, how could you not live on this planet and not <laughs> not feel challenged right. emotionally sure. in some way? Sure. Um, so, but um, but yeah, but before we move on from this topic, I I just it, it sounds like you are retaining the benefits. Mm-hmm. of that experience and and like almost what i'm imagining maybe is like a true integration even I neurologically so. i hope so i hope this feeling lasts it's it, it's been so long that i've had this feeling it's like am i still in the afterglow of the trip or not um uh, it's almost become the new normal so it's like the next time i trip i guess i'll know you know that feeling you feel the next day when you just feel awesome is i've lost track of is is this still the afterglow or is this the new normal? It's been almost a month of feeling really great. So I guess I'll be able to gauge that the next time. But as far as when we were talking about nighttime and dreams, I was getting closed eye visuals in black and white for about two weeks after my trip where I would wake up in the middle of the night just to roll over and I would get patterns, um, clear patterns wow. at, in black and white and very, very vivid dreams, not fantasy dreams, just very vivid dreams about just real life stuff, um, just in a, in a strange twist, you know, you know, twist to whatever it was. But it was, again, each dream was addressing something internally, either about my thinking or about my perception of an issue. And it was almost like 
they were still talking to me in dreams for weeks after the trip. And it's, it's kind of faded Beautiful. a little bit now, but yeah. still, uh, it, every night I get something. And I think that's wonderful. They did say yeah. in, in the, the upgrade that they, it would be easier for them to communicate with me now. And I'm hoping, maybe that's how they're going to do it. Maybe they're going to be continuing to work with me at night um, or through my, you know, my, my consciousness uh, throughout the day, sending messages, maybe more through the numbers and the 43, yes. all that sort of thing. But that the communication would be easier they said, and I, I'm hoping that means in my daily life outside of doing mushrooms, because I only do them maybe three, four times a year because it's so profound. I can't, I can't have a trip like that every month. I don't know. I mean, that would be too much for me to yeah. process. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that 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 totally makes sense. You know what I'm wondering is you're talking is if like me because again we're using the same terminology upgrade. So I had a real specific experience of feeling the energy, combi their energy combined with mine. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if actually you had some version of that, meaning mm -hmm. that you are permanently altered, that you're permanently altered. I hope so. I hope so because like you said, like I've always had that feeling of it's just something's not right. You know, and, and it's and other people don't seem to feel this way. And for whatever reason, I struggle. And it's just like I'm like I said, my brain just doesn't just doesn't process things like other people. And it's to my detriment because I'm struggling so much with these things. And now it, I'm like, is this how normal people feel all the time? This feels great. No, no wonder everybody's just, you know, shrugging things off. And I'm meanwhile, I'm freaking out. It's like if, if my mind was always like this. There's a lot of things that wouldn't be a big deal. So yeah. do you, I mean, have you ever taken those, those, the, the I'm sure you have the, the Myers Briggs, uh, type indicator MBTI. Yes. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm an INTJ. Okay. So I am, All right. I am one of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, like you said, you know, the machine elves take one look at me and, and, you know, I'm already analyzing their geometry, you know? And, and so it's like, <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm a strange egg to show up over there, and yeah. and I'm sure they have a challenge with trying to get me to stop analyzing and 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 you know internalize things in more of a, a you know an emotional subconscious way, and that's my challenge. I mean, you have to be you have to have a balance. You know, you, you can't yeah. always be a computer. Um, it, you know, I think life encourages you to be that way with like the educational world and the professional world, but it's not good for us. It really isn't. I, it I really isn't. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I feel like one of the key messages too, for me has to do with connecting to heart, my heart mm -hmm. uh, and how the heart, it, you know, one of the things that's come out with science about this is there's actually nerves in your heart that go from your brain to your heart. Right. Um, so there's a whole, it, what could be understood as like a heart intelligence you were mentioning Native Americans earlier. Jung, C.G. Jung, talked about how Native Americans would would reference themselves as thinking with their heart, mm -hmm. rather than like white people do with their brains or their head. So I think that's really beautiful what you said. And how do we, you know, it's like how do we get grounded in that emotional realm? And it sounds like they're that they're helping you with that. I mean, these emotional breakthroughs and and um, releases that you're having sound to me like um, like an expression of that right well you know, what they what, what they've sort of told me is like nobody nobody is really quote messed up it's it's ah. it's that we we have different stages of coming to know ourselves and we're in different places on this this grand hike of life but nobody is really messed up we all come into this with sort of the same you know basic chips in the bag and it's up to us as to what we do with it. And um, I think at some point in everyone's life, they make the choice whether they are going to get them to know themselves better and work on their issues or not. And some people right. choose to and some people choose not to. And that's that's your that's basically your choice. And like right. you were saying that you that, you know, there are some people that should not do mushrooms. And I, I would not encourage anybody to do them 
um, if they did not specifically really, really want to and were really willing yeah. to sign up for everything. I said, when you, the terms and conditions of doing this is that you are willing to go on wherever they are going to take you, even the things that yes. you may not want to see. And, um, and that's yeah. why, you know, when, when you talk about so many people talk to me about, you know, bad trips and their fear of bad trips. And I'm like, well, what is a bad trip really? Is it, it's, you're being shown something that, that does not resonate well with you. And why is that? And I don't know, have you, you've probably had some dark experiences too. And, and looking back on them, don't you feel like you were shown that for a specific reason and a lesson after the fact, when you look back on it, or was, was there anything that didn't seem like it had a purpose for me, everything that I've seen, even the worst of it had a definite purpose and I'm glad I saw it. Oh yeah. uh, I, I, I completely agree. Um, I think for me, what I felt like the mushrooms helped with was just helping bring to consciousness what I'm most afraid of, kind of along the lines of what I was saying earlier. So it felt like these are all things in my unconscious, things even that I'm haunted by or that are kind of operating uh, all the time psychologically behind the scenes. So like you were suggesting there, it's like they're just, the mushrooms are revealing uh, uh, what's already there, what's, yeah. uh, what's already present. And that you're actually going to be in a better situation, having more consciousness around whatever your psychological emanations are. And not only a consciousness, but it's, for, in, in my mind, it's like a gateway, a gateway to really having a whole new relationship with the inner realms. So, yeah, so I, I definitely find the, um, the negative um, experiences kind of like you were describing as part of the journey. I think I feel like if people could only understand, in a way, it's just a small part. It's a smidgen. I mean, it's huge. It's big in a way. But if you can handle that part of it, so many things, you know, can open up. Right. And, and I think, you know, you've, you've heard stories about, um, um, you know, my friend's neighbor took some mushrooms and he had eight hours of, of just a horrible experience. And, and, I, and, and I know that that can happen. But I think that when that happens, that's our fault when it does, because we've, al- we've given up and just allowed our thoughts to just run wild like the roller coaster. And we're not doing anything to actively try to change the vibe. I've had it go down the dark hole a couple times and I, I, I don't know how I knew to do this because like, it's, it's, it's pretty much completely opposite of my normal persona, but in the mushroom realm, I'm, I guess I'm more laid back than I am in real life. And, and when I was just flushed down that dark hole, I was just like, well, I guess we're going to see what's at the bottom here. Um, just keep on going. Mm, and, mm. and because I felt that way, suddenly it all changed and suddenly that dark part kind of went away now i guess if i had fought it and i resisted it and i had said yes. I, this has to end i have to this trip yes. to stop i want this over then that would have yes that would have amplified it and maybe it would have yes. turned eight hours of misery but for for what i i think like the best advice i can give people that are worried about that happening is that if it happens the the best way to get out of it is to not care if it lasts forever just say I don't care. If the rest of this trip, I don't care if the next, the rest of this trip is just an absolute horror show, whatever. And and it won't be. It won't be. Just by just by feeling that way, suddenly it's like boop. There goes the sun comes out, and then you're on to more fun stuff again. It's happened several times, and I'm like, I think maybe this is the way out. Is just don't care if it lasts forever. You know, maybe that's the lesson. Beautifully maybe said. that's the lesson we're supposed to learn. I think it's fantastic, and I've never heard of someone that way. I, um, uh, you know, as you were sharing that, I was, I was also kind of reflecting on um, a, a psychological premise that has to do with like radical acceptance of what is, um, and basically how it works. It's, uh, and this comes a little bit from Jeff Foster, I think, but, um, but, but it has to do with the notion that we're already accepting what is happening, whether we want to admit it to ourselves or not. So in that way, you're tapping into something innate in all of us. So we're, we play this game about not accepting what is, but at a deeper level, we accept all of it. And I found it so profound to work with my own psyche in that way. So every fear, every little bother, everything, it's all being accepted, including right. what feels scary or difficult. And so for me, that kind of reminds me, it makes me think about what you're describing is it's okay. It, whatever is, is okay, is what I hear you saying. 
if this is what is, I accept it. I accept what is in part. I, and I you, you know saying. what? It's not, a, it's not a resignation feeling either. It's not, I give up. It's, mm. I'm cool with this. Whatever, I'm cool with it. This is the lesson. I gotcha. All right. And how I've integrated that into my life has been well this year, this whole year. I'm one of those people, I think, that if I'd never been on the, the, the psychedelic journey, I would have absolutely freaked out about 2020. Uh, you know, uh, and now mm. I'm like, well, this is just where we're at. This is how it yeah. is right now. We're on our way through it to something better. This is going to end this everything that's going on. And, and we're going to be better because of going through it. And so mm. this year for me, this is like going through a dark part of a trip. And it's it's mm. the, it's a lesson and it's a, a time for growth. And there's a lesson to be learned. And we're going to come out of it and at some point look back and be glad that we went through it because of who we've become on the other side oh right on yeah i i very much i i profoundly resonate with that attitude and and i think it can be tricky because you know there's so many people kind of suffering and, and living in fear um but but at the same time it definitely to me feels like there's something important happening and there is just like all things this is not simply a negative thing you know right. what we're experiencing right now like even just look at from the lens of the planet i mean you know the the air is cleaner you know there's less you know pollution generally i mean they're all uh, you know, animals are kind of coming <laughs> out of hiding in a lot of places i mean and so you know maybe there's a way where you know you were saying that we're going to go back to where it was and or or maybe you didn't say it that way but that this will be over but i think like it, the idea will be this it'll be a new right what and, we go and into one of the lessons I learned on one of my trips was was the, the difference between, um, you know, creative power and destructive power, and that both have the the mm. capacity to destroy, but with creative power in the destruction comes new birth, new life, and new evolution out of that. Whereas destructive power just yes. is for the sake of destruction, and there's nothing that grows from it. And I think. The negative parts of what we're going through right now on Earth here as a society, and, and while it is tragic with everything that's been happening and how many people have died, I think that there will be a creative rise that comes out of this, um, that, yes. that this is part of a, 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 you know, crea a, a creative destruction um, and that we're all going to evolve from it. And you, um, that's... To me, like I said, it goes back to like dark trips that I've had or dark phases of trips. It's like, yeah, it's the breakdown of everything that you, you're you're holding on to, and then from that comes this like great um, learning and evolution that takes you to the next phase of the trip. So, you know, if life really yes. is a trip, we're living it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right on. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was I, I really, it's really wonderful how you, you framed all that. You know, and and I, I was, I was thinking as you were sharing. You know, so, so for folks like us, and there are others who are having more of these direct experiences. It makes me reflect on what our roles are going to be and what everyone's role is. I guess in my mind, kind of one of the lessons has been we're all kind of like these, uh, I, I, I describe it as like God complexes walking around, you know, I was on my run. I was seeing a couple of kids play and I was like, ah, there's a couple of little gods right there. <laughs> Hello gods. <laughs> right. You know, and so it's, I, I, you know, so it's very, I love this sort of like egalitarian uh, way of understanding um, being. Um, and at the same time, we're all different, you know, and so there's people like you, me, 434, and many, many others now more, but not a lot. I mean, it's not, it's, who knows how many, but, uh, you know, what's our function going to be? You know, like, so when I think about you, you know, I, I, and I don't, I don't mean this to be like any sort of suggestion at all, because, I mean, obviously, I, <laughs> each of us has our own life to live, but it does seem like you know, each of us is getting interesting information and you're getting a particular strand of it. And it just makes me wonder what the potential, what the possible future is. Like there are many possible futures. How do we find, if you want to put it this way, that highest vibration possible right. future? How does everybody do this? But what does it mean for us also individually? 
like you said, um, how how do I not only integrate what I know for myself, but this is now in the last year developed into all these other people are suddenly being helped by something that yeah. was just what I thought for me, and now yeah. it's come. I had no idea that yeah. what I've been doing is helping so many people who haven't maybe never even tried mushrooms, but just listening yes. to experiences has helped them work through things. And so, like you said about yes. going back to the idea of the crystal, it's almost like this inflow of things came through me. And then by the means of me starting my channel, suddenly this output happens. And then I, you know, I, I've got people from every corner of the world that talk to me now. And there's just such awesome. similarity with all these people. And it's like, wow, you know what? We, we have a platform now for connecting all of us and yeah. helping with whatever's going on. Like you said, this evolution, this, this, this raising of the, the, you know, general level of consciousness. I think that it's happening on, on a global scale. And like I said, when they did the, the alien upgrade or whatever happened to me, that, that most mm -hmm. people are going to flow right into it. They're just going to evolve with it. And, and some of us kind of needed a, like a manual jump start <laughs> on the upgrade uh -huh. track. I don't know. We yeah. we come from the same generation here, so maybe it's something about our, you know. And four three four is too. He's he's right there yeah. with us. We're all the same age, so yeah. That's maybe trippy. something about our our generation. Maybe we were like the first batch <laughs> that came. Well, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, a couple things occurred to me about that. So there's all obviously like I was born in '76, so I'm imagining. You and 434, 76, 77, something like that, right? He's a couple years younger, um, but I'm 76 okay. also, yeah. 76, okay. Yeah, so that was like the bicentennial. Um, yep. It also was like halfway through the 70s, so like the 60s happened. I was thinking about yeah. this the other day. It's like, this, it happened, <laughs> yeah. you know? Acid and yeah. you know, free love and all that shit happened. Yep. So, you know, so uh, we're, we got to reap some of the rewards of that. Perhaps, but also it was kind of like heading into the 80s and, you know, uh, AIDS and, and yeah. you know, all kinds of uh, somehow it felt darker, you know, going into that era. But um, was it? I think it was an era of of um, it was sort of like retraction after the after the 60s yeah. and 70s were such an era of opening. It was sort of like we just we went back into our shell again and it was sort of like, OK, recess is over, everyone back to work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's part of that's part of our generation. Also, I think about how people around our age, we kind of bridge this Internet divide or this this, you know, like we were, you know, when we were 10, 11, 12, 13, I mean, like computers were not hardly existing or not there even, you know, except in unusual circumstances. Um, and so yet we were young enough to catch on to technology when it finally took off. Right. Um, so I think about that, like I, I was actually thinking about it recently is we're connected with the old world. The old world would be pre-internet. Yeah. You know, the internet really has changed everything. And I think along the lines of what you're saying too, where it's bringing people together, like the fact that you can, you know, you're the reason I reached out to you was like we discussed. I mean, when I heard your, uh, your podcast, with uh with with 434 it was like what i remember just like i was like bowled over because yeah. it, it hit so deeply resonated with my experience and like you said had you not had your voice out there um you know people like me and other people who are having these kinds of experiences we would just continue to be alone right. in our experience so this this platform is allowing of course this whole other level of uh interconnectedness and, you know, I can't help it, but I guess I keep imagining with you, Star Pilot, like just to be, just imagine these trajectories, these developmental, progressive, self deepening, but also grow, you know, increasing connection to cosmic intelligence in whatever way it's going to show up. You know, like I wondered, well, if they can show you ships, can they show, can they show you technology that can help the planet? Could you talk to, I, and I'm just, I'm going way out there when I say this, but, you know, do you have scientist friends or are there people in the science world who are finally start <laughs> to go, hey, maybe the spaceships are not just going to come and land. Maybe 
they're communicating in other ways and that there are certain people they communicate with and maybe that information could be useful. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've kind of come to the, the, the conclusion that if there are aliens that physically come here in physical ships, they're the really primitive ones. Because <laughs> the ones that I talk to all the time don't even yeah. need – that would be like me walking to somebody's house to say hi in person as opposed to Skyping. You know, I mean, the, right. they're coming here right. on, on interdimensional levels of consciousness and, yeah. and, and affecting uh, – giving us information, giving us messages – and and you know what I think I had this in one of my one of my videos where they were talking this was last year before 2020 where they were talking about the state of the planet and and how humans have, are out of balance that we were here to to balance the planet and manage the animals and manage the resources and we have become something that is throwing it out of balance and I remember the message they said was that we are the problem but we are also the solution. Now, they didn't give me details on that, but I remember that specific phrase, and looking back on that, that was before any of this COVID stuff happened, and then seeing the change in the planet with all of us just staying home for just, mm. you know, that period of time, it just, like you said, resonated with me about, they were saying, yes, we are the problem, but we are also the solution. We have the ability to turn this around. Yes. And... I, I mean, sure, there could be some technology that could help us as well, but I think that a lot of like the environmental problems and the, the, the problems around us is a matter of us changing our thinking about how we're living our lives. And everybody's got to yes. be on board with it. And this has been one global experiment in, in everybody. Uh, one other time in history has everybody pretty much had to stay home. Uh, never. All right. Never. So it's yeah. almost like it's showing us, like, look, guys, um, look how quickly the Earth rebounded in that time. And with a, a little yes. bit of effort on everybody's part, look how easily that we can fix some of this stuff on our own. And Beautifully said. It's almost like we just have to get out of the way. We, and we have to get out of our own head and get out of our <laughs> own routine and, and yeah. a lot of the scaffolding of society that says you must do this, you must get in the car, you must drive to a building, and you must sit in a cubicle under a fluorescent light for eight hours, and you must do this until you're 67. Mm. That's insane, guys. <laughs> it's just... Totally. It's horrible, and it's, that, is, that was normal. That was normal before this year, is that is what you do. Now, we're learning that there's all kinds of other things that can be done, and the job still gets done. So it's what changed? Yes. Our thinking changed. And and yes. our thinking is changing toward things like psychedelics. And our thinking is changing toward means of therapy. And and I think that this is really the answer, guys. And it's what the mushrooms tell us. It's it's when you're taking mushrooms, your thinking changes. Your brain is rewiring itself and parts of your brain that never talk are now best friends. And all these synapses are firing and you're able to make these connections that you've never made before. And it's just like the Internet in your head goes wild for that few hours. And I, I think and I hope over years of doing this, I would hope that my brain would be a little different than it was when I started in a good way. I think it is. I really do. I look at who there I was 10 years ago um, and I've been doing this for about, yeah, I guess, nine years. Look at who I was 10 years ago, and I look at myself now, and it's a profound change. And it's not just about growing up and chilling out. It really isn't. Yes. I think that I could possibly have been a basket case by now if I had not, you know, if I had 10 more years along the line I was going with my thinking. But yeah. the mushrooms have allowed me to think in a different way. And I think if you take that analogy and globalize it and globalize the, the thinking of all of us in a different way, I think we have the solution already to a lot of our problems and the, all the unrest we're seeing in the world, all the, the struggle and the changes are, are some of that coming out. We're thinking about everything in a different way. So racism and, and, and bias and all this breaking the old ways of thinking and opening our mind to new ways of thinking that are going to take us to much better places mentally and, and, and for our own evolution, I think. Beautifully said. I, <laughs> I think uh, I, I, I almost have nothing to add to that. I just want to appreciate um, 
what you're saying. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and respond, but um, that was that was very beautiful. You know, honestly, I can't add anything to that. I think I think you're right on, and I think I think for me it would be more like it's kind of a dream. You know, if what what if psychedelics were able to become more mainstream. Yeah. You know, where where people were able to use them in the way that, that you and I have been talking about and to open to those messages. I have fantasies. I think for me on a personal level, I backed away from that because part of it is that I'm I don't want to impose what I want onto the world and for different reasons one would be feeling disappointed, <laughs> you know, if that were not come to pass. But at the same time, I really love your vision that you you state that vision so clearly and elegantly. Um, it's it's nice. I am just I'm I'm appreciating that. Um, and maybe there are things we can do to support that effort. Just think about what if it was available for everyone who wanted to to go on that experience and mm. to and to feel that. What if it was available for everyone who wanted it to do it? And so if, if those, who were, those who were not interested, that's, that's fine. But yeah. everyone who wanted to, think about how many people around the world, I, I think there would be a majority. I think there really would if, if it was available for everyone. And I think that that yeah. would be the tipping point for, for, for change. And I mean, we, that maybe it would take decades. Who knows how long it will take? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe in the next... Maybe we'll see it in the next, you know, five to ten years, where where things start to rapidly, I hope so, rapidly change uh, towards psychedelics and and toward their use, not only, you know, in a in, in a medicinal therapeutic way, but also for people like you and me, so we don't have to sneak around yes. to, to do this very important thing that is helping us so much. And Absolutely. like you said, it's it's not addictive. If you do seven grams of mushrooms. Do you do you want to hit that again <laughs> anytime soon? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> you know, it's like good for months, guys. You know, I don't need to do that much again. I mean, I go, I do it again when I'm ready. When I'm like, when they're calling me, when they're giving me signs, when I start getting the message, it's time, and it has to be. Everything's got to be perfectly right for me to do it, and. You know, it's uh, it's I, I wait for those messages to come and I don't and sometimes it's been almost a year. There was one time when they said, wow. we're not going to see you for a while. They're just like, you're, you're taking a break. And it was about 11 months, to, you know, between the two trips that that's I guess that's the that's their prescription for me. You know, they tell mm -hmm. me when it's time for my next my next session. And I listen to them because they're always right. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, have not, have not done them, um, for, I guess for, for, for several weeks. Um, but I definitely feel like you in the sense of, uh, what you're talking about as far as just, um, not being prescriptive about it, like not having my ego be in charge and just mm -hmm. kind of going with the flow is how I do it. Like what, what feels right. And it does not feel like the time right now right. and probably for a while for me to do that. And I feel very, it feels very comfortable. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think you make an excellent point about, um, I think, for almost everyone, the non-addictive quality, because it's not, it's just not about that um, right. at all. It, yeah, yeah, it's, it, there's no, uh, there, uh, there is, there is no, um, you know, uh, propensity or chance for, for addiction or abuse. Um, I, I can't imagine somebody just doing mushrooms. If you try, it's not going to work. You're gonna have build a tolerance so fast that if, let's say you try to do it every night for a, a week, it's you're right. you're just gonna right. waste your mushrooms. <laughs> so. and, what's, and what's so cool is the science bears this out. I mean, there's just more and more scientific evidence. And, you know, and I know people who are working with you know above ground and underground, you know, with mushrooms. So like there's there's a lot of research going on at like John Hopkins and these mm -hmm. other places, and there are very few like side effects as long as the set and setting is good. Right. I mean, people usually have quite, you know, these the experiences they have are, are sometimes considered um, uh, some of the most important moments of their life, right? I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the research where it's compared to marriage or giving birth, yeah. you know, in terms of the spiritual experiences. So I'm I'm really inspired um, by your 
your interest and your kind of elegance in describing how to roll this out to the masses um, or, or, or to people, like you said, who want it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited about being a part of that journey. And maybe it'll be kind of things like this, conversations that, that people are having, you know, like us online um, to kind of help get the word out and, 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 and support um, an openness, a, a more and more openness to what's possible. For me, one of the coolest things about mushrooms is it's not just about when I'm taking the mushrooms. Right. It's, yeah, it's like, a, it's like I've, I've been learning how do I open to that portal, if you want to put it that way, which for me paradoxically has to do with going inside my own self. And then it's like as the deeper I go towards and feel towards my own core, it's like the more available I feel to receive, you know, messages or different kinds of experiences. I definitely do not feel like an expert at that. <laughs> I got to admit, you know, I feel this is all still kind of new for me um, in a lot of ways. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, inspired um, about the, the possibilities. But one thing in that vein, I will say, you know, that I was experiencing a little bit as you were talking, I think partly because... I was experiencing you, Star Pilot, a little bit as a channel in a way, or a, you're, you're transmitting using that crystal imagery. Like it's, I can feel, at least from my perspective, I can feel that energ energetic presence in your speaking and in your writing. Um, and so I found myself thinking, because this is something I've been trying to reflect on, how to be in more contact with them um, all the time. I think if I'm not actively on a mushroom trip, my best way of making sure that I stay in a, in a state of vibration where I am most open to those messages would be in trying to meditate more often daily. I mean, even if it's for a minute or two, anything, I mean, I think meditation itself is an instant um, boost in, in your vibration. But if yeah. to meditate with the intention of, um, of maintaining that level of contact and being open to anything that you might receive. I mean, that would be, that would be great. Now I haven't necessarily had any meditative experiences yet where I've been able to do that. Um, but then again, meditation is really, really challenging for me. I can do it uh, on mushrooms. I'm a pro, but I have one of those racing minds. That's like an engine yeah. at 9,000 RPM. And it's very hard to quiet my mind and keep it from thinking about everything at the same time. So um, I'm working on it though. And I'm working on it and I am getting better. Cool. At it, but it's sort of like, I, sometimes I feel like they, they took the person that is the most unlikely person in the whole world <laughs> and said, we're going to do something with this. <laughs> what we got here. Now I know that, you know, 434, he, he gets messages too. And, and he, yeah. I mean, he gets incredibly specific messages about subjects. I mean, when I'm over there, I can't even think to ask a question. I come with all these questions I'm going to ask the machine elves, the entities. I end up just babbling on about something else. But I mean, before three, four, and I can ask, can ask specific questions and get answers back. So if there's there's a real channel, there's a real you know conduit for information. And, and what he's done with his with his YouTube channel is amazing. Yeah in getting that, um, that information out to people. And I wish, I wish everybody could have that kind of experience. And I'm not sure why some people do, some people don't, but I think everybody, everybody has the potential. I think everybody has the potential of, of yes. reaching level during a trip where they get a message from somewhere, from some kind of entity. Now you saw, you, you definitely had experiences during your trip, that last one with, with a presence, with an entity, with, I mean, did you see anything? I mean, were you like closed eye, um, you know? Yeah. So closed eye. Um, so like I was describing, it was like this purpley energy and I was seeing like symbols kind of flashing in front of me and they were showing me what was like, uh, this, like I said, in my email, it's like this technology that was like biological with some mm -hmm. sort of like bio, very natural. Like this is not like they're saying this, they're showing me the supernatural technology that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there was like love. I know that sounds weird to say, but it's like love and technology. Can you imagine love with technology? Yeah. I don't even, that's not even a thought I would have had. Um, that's like but, with, 
with the spaceships, I always describe them as they're organic, yet they are they're they're like machines and they're alive and they have an entity of their own, but yet they look to our eyes to be like mechanical objects, but yet there is they think, they feel, and what they explained to me is that they're they're actually born. So it's it's oh. It's not wow. just a machine. Yeah, it's not just a machine, even though it looks like a, a ship and you can actually fly it and, and whatever. But it it's actually alive. It's actually born. It actually hatches from something like a cocoon. I saw it happen. And, um, wow. and it grows and it lives and it breathes through its metallic skin like an animal. And it yet, but it looks just like a fractalized spaceship <laughs> and they look at them like um they're very proud of them like um almost like they're their children but not really but they're very proud of them um and yet and they're that they work together in, in some sort of a team for whatever their purpose is but there's a good example of organic technology i mean it's it's not inanimate for us our technology is inanimate and the best thing yes. we have is, is artificial intelligence this goes like way beyond that like way, yes. way beyond that. We're talking about a sentient being that just happens to look like something to our pea brains um, that we can't wrap our minds around, but it's actually alive and completely aware. And But our, our best word for it is spaceship, just like our best word for these entities is like machine elf. It just seems like I wish we had more words. I, I feel like sometimes I'm trying to, and I, I used this analogy before, I'm trying to tell a story with an alphabet that's got 12 letters. <laughs> and, and it's like it, language fails to yeah. communicate what this is. And unless you've seen it, unless you've been there and heard it, it's language is just, it, it falls short of, of doing its job of communicating sometimes. And yes. Yeah. Yes. If I could say though, you seem to have a pretty, you have an ability to at least articulate something that people are able to connect with, myself included, in terms of that experience. You know, there's so much. There's so much. I mean, I feel like, God, we've covered like a lot of territory, <laughs> uh, but it also feels like it's still, it's unfolding. You know, it's like emergent. Right. It, there's so many facets to this, and it's not just, this isn't just about trippy patterns and colors. Um, there's <laughs> there's so much more to this. And I know 434 is, is making like an encyclopedia of this information that's going to be massive. And um, I'm wow. really looking forward to seeing that because there is, there's so much, like you were saying with entities, just ones I can think of off the top of my head, you know, the... The Terrence McKenna, you know, jesters, I've seen those, the, like, wow. the gene elves, the self-transforming, you know, you know, fractal elf, for lack of a better word, um, yeah. things that were more just beings of light, um, things that were more like, you know, alien energies, um, things that didn't talk my language, and I could suddenly talk, th talk theirs, other ones that talked perfect English that were clearly different than the other ones. Then there were, like, doctor-type spirits and, um, you know, very native, um, like, motif-type, like you see the carvings on rocks, like things that look like that. Um, there's so many different kinds of entities that I've experienced that, and then we only have the words aliens, machine elves, and, and uh, you, you know, entities. Well, those are our three. Aliens, machine elves, entities. That's all we've got is just those terms to cover all these different types of beings. It's just there's a lot. And that those are just the you know, five or six I've seen. There's probably thousands and thousands and millions. Yes. Who knows how many? Who knows totally. how many? And, and possibly religions of the past have called them gods and spirits and angels and cherubim and who knows what word you're going to use for it but it's clearly describing something that we can't see with our eyes but we perceive with our being as something from another realm of of existence and as i said every belief pretty much that i can think of accepts the fact that there's things we can't see at a very basic level are, do things exist that we can't see, that we, that we can't perceive with our eyes, but we know exist because we know their effect on other things? True. 
true across the board. And when it comes to spiritual things, it comes to metaphysical things. I think everybody's, even the most head in the sand person on earth can at least say that they've had deja vu. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. this little vein that goes through every single person that there's something that you can't necessarily see with your eyes, but you know it's real. Yes, absolutely. I think that's, that's... That's the trunk of the tree from which all the branches of all the stuff, I think, goes out. And... Nice. How open we are to uh, what what we're going to perceive is that's up to us. None of it's getting being forced on us. Um, there's some people that take 10 grams of mushrooms and they don't they don't get anything close to what you know four three four gets on one gram. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's bio, biology. I don't know if it's like the openness. That would be something that would be great to find out as to why. Um, what really facilitates that? Um, there's a there's a, a level of of research that we haven't even begun to uh, you know address yet. And just like what we were talking about, dark you know bad trips and dark. It's like why does that happen? I don't know. I mean, it could happen with the best preparation in the whole world, and you have a, a dark phase of a trip. Um, but yeah. like you said, it, it, what, is it your biology that causes it? Is it the mushrooms just giving you the lesson? We don't we don't. There's so much we don't know about this that all of us even the the most experienced tripper in the universe i think still feels like there's there's a lot we don't know absolutely if Terrence mckenna yeah. were here today he would probably tell us that there's a lot that that even he does not know he probably knows it now but he didn't know it then <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah totally well in that way i think it'll be really interesting to see how all this unfolds i mean there it does i i completely agree it feels like there's so much uh potential on so many levels so there's kind of the psychological personal psychological level you were referencing there's the level of the environment there's a level of our science there there's so much here for us in potential i mean it's it's almost like and i'm only saying this because of the lack of words as you were saying before but it's New religion is not the right frame because this is not about religion. It's like, because uh, like you said, I agree, encompasses all religions beyond religion and whatever. It's yet it has that kind of quality. It's like that's what it was for me. I feel a sense of meaning. I, I feel I don't feel so alone and like a lump of flesh, gra- you know, gravitationally bound to this planet with all this craziness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. not all there is at all. At all. That was that that what you said right there, and actually you're gonna laugh because as you were speaking, I looked up and it's eleven eleven and the recording was at two eleven eleven at the same time. So awesome. there's there's synchronicity for the night. Uh, but when I was, you know, adolescent growing up, I was always I was always like sad about the fact that this is like all there is, like this is it. You know, I grew up reading you know fantasy novels and and enjoying all the you know fiction and sci-fi and whatever and i'm like and then i look at the world and i'm like this is it like really this is all the- <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. Yes. and and but what i've what i've discovered is that thank goodness no this isn't all there is <laughs> that there is way more and you'll never get to the end of all of it um, and it's it, the, the further in you go, the more there is, and that kind of reminds me of like Narnia. Um, that the, the the more you go, the, the deeper it gets, and there is no end to the knowledge and the learning and the experience. And it's this is not all there is. Fantastic. There's something that is so you know for me deeply gratifying on a soul level, tapping into that yeah. awareness, quite healing for me. Yeah. So. Well, how cool. Well, this is this has been really great. Um, thank you so much for, um, you know, being, being willing because I know you've got a lot of people that contact you. So I really am just very appreciative of, of um, you being willing to talk to me directly. And this yeah. was this was so much fun. And I, I'm really looking forward to kind of figuring out how to have an online presence myself down the road. And mm-hmm. You know, and then maybe we could kind of switch roles a little bit and I can do more of an interview on you, too. Absolutely. Uh, And, um, yeah, maybe your channel will be uh, with all of ours and we'll all be kind of, you know, 
projecting the same, you know, collective consciousness on, on, um, you know, the, on the psychedelic realm, that would be great to have one more voice out there, especially somebody that's got your background and your education and your perspective. And that's why I really want to talk to you. I mean, you're the first one I've ever, I've ever had a Skype call with because I'm like, not only did you get the upgrade seven days before me, but you've got this incredible background that gives you a perspective that's completely unique. You know, you're not just like some, you know, 23 year old college kid that had, you know, a, a sure. mushroom trip last week, which is still great in itself. Yeah. But I've the, the you've got this this you know wealth of, of background and information to put that trip in perspective with that I was like I, I got to talk to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, that's great. Well, again, yeah, I'm I'm so it's been it's been really wonderful and uh, for me, uh, frankly, talking to you tonight is is kind of helping ground me more in kind of my new phase Good. that I feel like I'm going into, you know, around related to the psychedelic realm, related to the entities, related to relating with other people, having those kinds of experiences. So I just want to thank you again for kind of uh, shepherding me through this initial experience. That's I'm glad I could help. I'm, you know, it's, this is all worth it when when I find out that that it's it's helped somebody else and and that it's helped them on their own journey. That's like the greatest thing for me because this has done so much for me and other people have have kind of shepherded me along and to see like other people being helped, you know, directly or indirectly um, by by what I've done is just it it's it makes me feel really good. Awesome. All right. Cool. Well, great. Thanks again. I look All forward right. to Have a great touch. night. Great meeting you. An awesome conversation. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. Well, take care and good night. All right. Good night. Bye. So there you have it. Thank you, Lucidity73, and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. If this conversation and podcast is something you relate to with your own psychedelic journeys and you'd like to reach out, you can contact me at starpilot33 at protonmail.com, or if you like... You can contact Lucidity73 at lucidity073 at gmail.com. Both of our email addresses are listed in the video description. Until next time, everyone, keep it psychedelic, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you on the other side.